Hey everyone, this is Chris with Cowdog Craftworks, and today we're going to answer Brad Pitt's question about what's in the box by making this keepsake box with an inlaid live edge lid. I started by sorting the offcuts for this build. I'm going to be working with some dimensional poplar, cutoffs of a Paduke panel, and an offcut of spalted live edge maple. To have identically sized inlays for the top and bottom, I traced the edges of the lid panel and then used a square to make up for the voids caused by the live edge. Then I used my framing square to make sure everything was referenced with an existing edge. With the measurements done, I ripped and crosscut the Paduke panel to size. I then use this Craig Multimark to measure 1 16th of an inch. It's a little thinner than my blade curve so that I could create a rabbit which would then fit a dado on the box size. Since I couldn't run the live edge against my fence, I used my bevel jig as a sacrificial fence so that I could rabbit the opposing side. I then bumped the fence out another blade curve or so to make sure I had a strong enough tongue made to set into the dado. After that was done, I rabbited the parallel straight edges. The bottom panel had four straight edges, so I rabbited those as well opposite the fence. Since I'm not using a flat tooth saw blade, I needed to clean up the rabbits a little bit. I used this old Steve Ramsey trick, which is wrapping some sandpaper around the paint stirrer to clean them up. Paduke's a little bit on the dense side, and therefore it's a little harder to clean up with sandpaper. So I went ahead and used a sharp chisel to clean up the rabbits to make sure they had flat bottoms. A rabbit plane would have also been extremely useful here. Now I took an unusual step in box making by ripping the lid from the base before assembling the carcass. I wanted to make sure that I could easily rabbit the lid and the base of the box so that it could have a secure fit. This was done as opposed to inlaying some sort of tongue or using a rabbit fit on a router that I would have to clean up after the fact. I then ripped down the dados, making one cut and then bumping the fence slightly in and making a second pass. As you can see by the test fit, it worked fine with just a little bit of cleanup. I then took a sharp chisel and cleaned up the rabbits again on the top and bottom just like I did before. To miter the corners, I set my blade to 45 degrees. I then measured and cut a test piece of plywood to check for square. I made one cut then flip the piece, lining the end of the cut with a 45 degree saw mark in the backstop. This is a relatively foolproof and accurate way to do miters, and as you can see, I ended up square. On my actual workpiece, I used the inside of the rabbit and then a framing square to mark the inside corner of the miter, and then repeated the previously shown process in order to get my mitered corners. I came up a little short with the poplar and then managed to dado the wrong side of my newly cut box side. So, I decided to turn this flaw into a feature by inlaying a piece of scrap red oak into the dado. I just used some painter's tape and glue to set this strip into place. While waiting on that to dry, I threw my orbital sander upside down in my jaw horse to create a sanding station for all my components. This is a little bit of a hack to replace a benchtop sander, and it just seems to work. I really enjoy it, and it gives me a little bit of ease in use. If you guys like what you see, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. Also, I ended up giving this box away through an Instagram giveaway, along with a few other tools and goodies. So if you want to keep up with more content and more giveaways, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. After the glue is dry on the inlay, I trimmed the red oak down on the table saw as close to flush as I could before sanding. What? To assemble the lid in the base, I went ahead with the blue tape method for miters. First you tape the outsides together, Flip them over, apply glue, apply your panel, and then roll up to assemble, using a last piece of blue tape and some glue to lock it into place. To add strength and a little style to the mitered corners, I went ahead and broke out the spline jig, cutting some slots for splines in each of the corners of the lid. On the base of the box, I cut one set of slots, then flipped the box over and cut another set to ensure rigidity. Now, 
Installing and cutting the splines got a little interesting. I tapped the splines in with some glue and then used my pull saw to trim them down after a glue set. However, I was cutting toward the mitered corner instead of away from it towards the middle of the box and ended up with some spline blowout when I made the secondary cut. I lost the blowout piece so it couldn't be fixed like a chip with some glue and tape or even a little CA glue with some activator. So after a little sage advice, I tried cutting in the other direction on the lid and voila, it worked. Just fine, no blowout. Now I still had a box to make and since the spline blowout in some of the areas was irreparable, I used the table saw at 45 degrees to knock the miter corners off the box and create a chamfer of sorts. Then, I used a chisel to hand chamfer all the edges and clean up some of the finer details on the lid and base. Then I did a little more hand sanding up to 400 grit. To make sure that a dummy like me would always line the grain up right, I branded my logo in at the side across the lid and the base so that there was a visual guide for alignment. Then, I hit the whole box inside and out with a couple coats of boiled linseed oil, making sure to get into all the cracks and crevices, especially in the live edge lid where the panel had a lot of voids and pores. Then, I wiped off the excess. After a couple days of dry time, I went with a semi-gloss spray lacquer as my final coat. Lacquer is nice for detailed work like this where sanding could compromise some fine edge work because you don't need to sand between coats of lacquer. Just spray and wait for about 30 minutes to dry and spray again and again and again. For a final sand, I went with a thousand grit wet sand. Make sure to not confuse your whiskey and your sanding water when finishing. Just lubricate your abrasive and lightly sand with the grain, drying off after you're done. And then I was finished. I really liked how the small project turned out, especially that amazing color from the Paduke for the bottom of the box. And the live edge top with a slight void in the lid is incredibly unique. Thanks for tuning in guys and see you next time here at Cow Dog Craftworks.